Hello, hello. Perhaps you have seen some of my animation work before and thought to yourself, hey, I want to work on something similar myself. Good that the process is actually very easy, but as the name implies, we first gotta make ourselves a puppet. So why don't we head out to our art program of choice? Here we are in Clip Studio Paint. One thing to consider with paper puppets is that you can't simply just draw a character and then cut it up. It's always better to make the pieces at the same time as you're drawing the character. Here you see some slightly different examples of paper puppet constructions. They can be as complex or as simple as you want. But for our example, we want to make something very simple. Like, let's say, a little fawn. We already have a reference up in the corner, so all we need to do is just sketch a silhouette. We want it to be in a neutral standing position. Or the most common pose our character will take. But keep in mind, this sketch is just a template. So when you feel you are done, we can move on to the next part, which is drawing the parts. I will outline my parts with a thick brush. And we should decide how many parts we want. We don't want too many for this one. So I'm thinking one for the head, one for the neck. For the body, which will be subject to a lot more stretching and squishing, I want to give it four parts. For the legs, I will conjoin some bones into singular shapes, namely at the hoof and the shoulder. They are not as important in animating a simple model. You can also choose to just give it two shapes per leg. It really doesn't matter what style you use for your character. You can do it lined, lineless, shaded, shadeless. You can make it look like actual paper or something else. Uh, do what's most comfortable for you. But keep it in mind that you want every single part on its own layer. And you want the parts to also overlap with each other in a semicircle way. This way, when they animate, you won't have any particular part of the limb that will poke out of another one when it's rotated in a certain way. Let's skip over to the finished character, because we have something important to go over. You know that fawns have two ears and four legs? Ours currently only has one and two legs. That's something we gotta fix. While we could keep the texture as is and add the extra limbs in Blender via duplicating them, it might not look as great as we want it to be. Alternatively, we could just redraw the limbs as a separate layer, but it might be just too much work. I suggest that we merely copy every single layer we want duplicated, keep it in the same place, and recolor it to the correct color. The last thing remaining before we move over to Blender is that we disassemble the phone. I usually just keep a copy of the character in one corner of the screen to serve as a later reference. Because we have to assemble the phone in Blender. <laughs> and it's very easy to get lost when you have a lot of pieces. Especially when you have a lot of pieces. Don't forget that you have to move both sides of the ear and limbs together to the same spot. Make sure all parts also have a generous amount of space around them. Because we'll need to cut them out later. And when you're done, we just need to save each copy of the image, one with the inside and one with the outside layer as a separate image. We are now in Blender and we know what we must do. Down here we will add a new mesh, specifically a new plane. Here in the sidebar we will add two new textures. 
Let's also give them the right names. And down here, we will just assign to them the correct textures. You will probably have to browse through your files to get them. And if we click here, we can see our texture. You might have noticed why the texture was square, so we don't have to mess with unwrapping the UV because it already is. Going into edit mode, we will select the loop cut mode in the sidebar. With it, we will do some generous divisions between some of the body parts. And once that's done, we will move over to the knife tool. This tool feels most like having scissors in your hand. All you have to do is just click to select a shape and press enter to confirm it. You want to cut out every single shape and make sure you don't cut away a piece accidentally. You don't have to worry about topology with these because good topology is for bending meshes. Meanwhile, our phone will be rigid. So let's just finish up the cutting. And after that's done, we have to select every single part and yeet it into the open. You do that by clicking the selection, pressing P, and selecting Separate by Selection. I will also hide the original pane, then I will select everything by clicking A and merging them together. You can also just select everything if you want to be slightly slower like me. And after that we can unhide the plane by clicking Alt H and we can begin assembling the phone. Sure, you could have an actual reference image in the background, but why would you fumble with that if you can have it right there on your texture? <laughs> we also want to make the texture actually transparent by assigning an alpha mask which is just one of the images we already have. And we will also change the clipping modes to this. Now we can see the transparent image and we can actually finish assembling the phone. That shouldn't take too long. And after we're done with that, we have to rotate the phone to stand upright and that his left and right side are on the x-axis, which is the red line in Blender. And what we're gonna do now is just displace all the parts so they no longer overlap. You might want to imitate the same layering you used when drawing it. So with the legs, we're gonna cascade them and everything else. We'll figure it out. It's time to pay off the two textures we did. So we select all the parts that have the extra texture and we will separate it into its own object. We will also remove back face culling so the texture is invisible from the other side. But if we duplicate those faces, swap the normal so they face the other side, and assign the other texture, look what happens now. It's the other side. <laughs> and now if we add to that object a mirror modifier, we now have four legs and two ears, both of which are properly textured. Of course, we can also give the body the other side, but it's not as important or necessary. Though we currently don't need all of those extra faces, so I'm just going to delete all of them down to the bare minimum. Make sure you also apply the mirror modifier before you delete those extra faces as well. Even though we had to remove those faces, nevertheless, 
knowing how to do that may become important for your own creations. Anyway, it's time to work on the armature. I prefer my armature to be thinner and we also want it to appear in the front of the model. Every single body part needs its own bone. So we have to give it one for the belly, the back, the rump, the front, and of course the legs, which we will first slightly remove from the body. And now we can extrude both of them. And when we put down all the bones, we can give every single bone a name. Make the names clear and easy to remember. And when it comes to the legs and the ears, make sure that the, at the end of the name, you give it either an L or an R. In our case, we will put down an L because it's the left side of the model. When we mirror the model, it will also mirror the name. So we don't need to name each side separately, which might take a lot of time, especially on a more complex model. And to do that, we just have to select all the bones and click Symmetrize. There we go, as you see, all the bones are named as they should be. But we're not done yet. We actually need to let Blender know what bone alters which body part. I will also merge both of the objects together. And let's head over to where we can assign vertex groups. This part isn't hard at all. You only need as many vertex groups as there are bones and they need to share a name. It might just take a little bit of time, but not that much. So we add the group, give it the same name as the bone, and click on the body part, and assign it to the group. You can do it in whatever order you want, just make sure that in the end of the day, there is a body part assigned to a group. After we have all the groups assigned, we can head over to modifiers and add the armature modifier. We add our armature to it and we can actually start testing our phone. So let's go to pose mode and rotate around. As you can see, it's actually quite neat already. We could always decide to add some small modifications. Like I can see that the neck is clipping awkwardly and I could do some small alterations on the bones. Another thing we can do is also detach the bones because currently some of the bones are connected and if they weren't, we could better imitate the wriggling around you can do with normal paper puppets. One other thing I want to modify is also reassign the ears to the head bone because currently they're assigned to the neck and I don't want that. So let's do those quick little fixes and our model will actually be done. This is really all you need to know to start making paper puppet models. Of course, there are other ways to improve these models, like, like you can look up a tutorial for bone constraints, that could come useful, or how to animate textures for extra details. But this is all for now from me. I hope you learned a lot, and give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more from me. Bye-bye and get creative!